Well, Clive Owen working now on the Nick for Cinemax. This character, uh, Dr. Thackeray, boy, he is complex and just seems like a very juicy part for an actor. What what drew you to wanting to do this? Um, I was so, so taken with the script. Um, Stephen uh, called me up and said that he'd read the script. He was thinking about turning it into uh, a 10-hour television series and wanted me to read it. And uh, I was shooting something else, sitting on a trailer and... I thought I'd, I'd just start reading and get a flavor of what this thing is like and 45 minutes later I knew I'd have to do it. It was that good a piece of writing and such a great, great character. It's such a, I, I knew a little bit about the world it was set because I did this small movie called Century many years ago which was set at the turn of the century in the world of medicine and I'd done a bit of research for that so I knew that this was a very exciting time you know in the, in the world of medicine and um, I just was. I just thought it was the most original, and kind of very unusual for a period piece as well. It felt kind of visceral and dangerous and edgy, and it was unlike anything I've read. And how much beyond the pilot did they fill you in on, uh, so that you would you know know the arc of the character for a first year? Well, obviously that was the concern. You know, you read one script and you think, you know, first the the fear is will they be able to keep this standard up because this is so good and then you wonder where they're going to take it and uh, so the next stage was to get on the phone with Michael and Jack the writers and Stephen and all of us together and they it became clear very quickly that they'd done an enormous amount of research not only was my character inspired by a real doctor William Holstead but they had just sort of you know completely immersed themselves in New York of 1900 in the world of medicine and they just had so much that they wanted to put into it and then they talked to me through the sort of journey of Thackeray really and said this is where we'd like to take it, this is the world we want to go in and this is where we want to end it and uh, I was you know, totally convinced after that conversation that it was something I wanted to do and I have to say credit to them. It happened very quickly once um, it all came together, it was only um, a few months really before we started shooting and I was convinced we'd be waiting for some scripts and that obviously there is a concern that the, the following scripts would be as good as the first and they just delivered all ten scripts before we started shooting and all of them were of such high quality. Well that's a rare thing when I interviewed them last week uh, Jack and Michael we talked about that that you know that's a real luxury for everybody involved in the production that you've got that full arc of that whole season already written. I, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe, I, even when Stephen was saying to me, oh no, I'm planning to try and get all the scripts done before we start shooting, it just didn't seem possible in the time that the guys could come through with it. But um, it wasn't just that they did it in the time, it was just the quality of the writing was so high and they were so, they were so kind of quick and, you know, the scripts were, were on a par with that original pilot script. Well, they said that you did one thing that they thought was very intriguing because you would shoot scenes from different episodes over the course of uh, you know a day or a week or whatever. I guess to use the same sets, you were at that that different stages of that person of the, your character's life, and you wanted to be able to keep up like like his drug use and where where his mind was at any given moment, uh, even though you might be shooting you know different time frames of his of that, that particular uh, year. So how did you do that and why did you do that? Well, that, that came really, I kind of stole the whiteboard idea from Stephen. I went to one of their brainstorming sessions where they were talking about scenes and sort of moving things around and, and Stephen had this big whiteboard on the wall and it made things very easy and he could see the sort of full 10 hours and where to put scenes and how to move them around. Um, when Stephen said, look, I want to board this like a movie, I, I don't want to shoot episodically. My first instinct was that's fine because you shoot every movie out of sequence, and you know I'm used to sort of preparing for that. But very quickly realized that carrying ten hours was enormous, really, and that I needed a visual graph. I needed something where I could look at. So both in you know at work in in my dressing room and at home, I had a big board with a list of all the scenes, um, all the episodes. And, you know, the one brilliant thing about playing a character like Thackeray is because, because he is a drug addict, um, there's always more than the scene going on. You know, the, a huge 
investment into each scene is where he is and sort of his drug intake. You know, are we in a period where he's in need of drugs? Is he taking too many drugs? You know, and it was really important to just plot that we moved so fast and we literally jumped. Like when we shot in Thackeray's house, we did the whole, every scene out of the 10 episodes in a couple of days. So I'm jumping around and it's quite, you know, it's quite a journey he goes on. And it's, it was just a huge help having a visual graph of all that, really. You've worked with so many incredible directors over your career. What, what do you like about Steven Soderbergh? He's unlike any director I've ever worked with. I mean, he probably, he has an unbelievable brain, really, to be able to carry, to, to shoot this the way that he shot it and to carry the whole thing and, and do it with, you know, such incisiveness and such style and w w it was really something to witness. I mean, you know, it's probably known that he does everything. He, he likes, he operates, he directs, he edits and it's so refreshing and reassuring having such a singular vision. You feel in such, such great hands and you feel he's completely... I, I've never come across a director who's, not, who's so on top of all aspects of putting a film together and you know, he, he has an amazing team around him that have worked with him many times. They are incredibly on top of their game and incredibly efficient. And um, what's great for an actor is it just leaves you to do what you've got to do and be worrying about the scenes you're doing with knowing that you're just in, that, you know, you're, you're taking great care of and you're in the hands of somebody who is so on top of their game. I would think also as an actor, I mean, when you've got so many things going on and you've got such a um, interesting, intricate character to play, just knowing that somebody like that, that you could trust them, that you could just you could just well, do your no, job and trust them. There is no question that him, you know, directing all, all ten was a you know a big part of the reason why I I did it and why I wanted to do it because of, because exactly of that, you know, I'd, I've been a big fan of you know a lot of his films and. I just felt, you know, that we had the potential with this material to 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 really make something special. And you know, Michael said something interesting last week that I thought, uh, of with, especially from an acting standpoint, they said, as the writers, they know the the color spectrum of you know the work, the world that they're in. But they said Stephen just he's like he sees it in ultraviolet. He sees it in a whole different uh, frame than than even they do as the writers. Well, he's, I mean, the, the brilliant thing about Stephen is that he has a very strong perspective. He can look at a scene a number of times and get a very clear idea of where the camera should go and what story should be told out of this scene. He's not somebody that just goes in and covers the scene generically and says, okay, that actor speaks, we cover that actor. He comes in every single scene with a clear perspective, and sometimes it's a very dynamic, unusual one. But... Um, it's, it's just really incisive, intelligent, bold, brave filmmaking. I want to ask you about two other filmmakers you worked with, uh, if you don't mind. One, you had to be just totally thrilled last season when um, Alfonso Cuaron, your director of uh, Children of Men, uh, got on that run and just won every award in the world, including the Oscar. Yeah, I was to totally thrilled. I mean, I, I you know... I adore Alfonso both as a director and as a human being and uh, it took him a long time to put that film together and the thing that really struck me when I saw it, it was such a singular vision and to a large extent only he really knew what that film could be and what the potential was. You pitch that movie and you say it's about you know two people in space and da -da -da, but it was the execution of it that was everything and you know to, the, the, for him to pull that film off and I thought it was technically one of the most dazzling things I'd ever seen, and I think that you know the shifting of perspective, the, the just the way that film was put together, it was it was a new experience, and uh, I, I was totally thrilled for him. Yeah. And we lost uh, the director that, that got you your first Oscar nomination, Mike Nichols, a few days ago. Just tell us um, a great memory of him. Probably the smartest and soundest human being I've ever met. Really, I mean. Uh, it was a pleasure just to be in that guy's company. You know, he was such a brilliant guy, and he proved himself so many times over and did such remarkable work and did it with such grace and dignity and intelligence. And 
you know, I remember when we did Closer, there was a two-week rehearsal period where we'd all get together and sit and not necessarily work the material, but just talk around the material and get a sort of flavor of where Mike was going to take the, the movie. And it was one of the most memorable couple of weeks I spent because it was just drinking in Mike Nichols every day. And uh, he, he was such a special guy, and it's a huge loss. Now you did the play as well, right? Closer. Yeah, I, it was a very, it was a very um, unique experience, really, because I I played Dan on the stage, the other part in the original production at the National, and to get the opportunity seven years later to play Larry, it, it was a real lesson in in discovering as an actor. You look at a piece of material through your character's perspective. When when I read a script, I know what part I'm reading for, and I'm looking at the whole world of that movie or that story from my character's perspective. And to get the opportunity, having worked the play, know how great the dialogue was, know what a sort of, you know, really strong, dazzling piece of writing it was, but to see it suddenly from the other guy's perspective and be, it was like doing something completely fresh and new but incredibly familiar at the same time so it was a very you know special experience what brought that about what what along the way did they say you know he played this on the on the stage but we want to make him the other character for the movie well i think patrick knew that when i i, I read the play very very early on before they even workshopped it at the national before it became a proper fully fledged play that was going to be put on and uh I wanted to play Larry, <laughs> but I was too young. And Patrick said, "No, you're too young. Like, uh, but um, you know, we'd love you to do Dan." And I said, "Listen, there's four great parts. I'll play anything. You know, I, I want to be a part of this." And uh, and I think it was Patrick's thing to to Mike who said, "I think Clive, you know, could do Larry." And how did Mike Nichols change up? Well, from from your experience on stage to what you did in the film, what did he do that was different? Um, well, I, I, knew, I, I know for a fact that he, if, since seeing the play, he had contacted Patrick regularly about whenever you're ready to do a film, I'd love to do it. So obviously, he really struck a nerve with him. He, he, he you know, he really responded to the writing. Um, you know, Mike Nichols is often regarded as one of the great sort of acting directors. You know, when I look at something like Angels in America, I consider it some of the best ensemble acting I've ever seen anywhere. You know, and time and time again, people look work with Mike Nichols, you just see, and people say, well, why, why is it, what, you know, why, is, why does Mike Nichols pull out performances from actors? And I think he's, he's one of those guys who makes actors feel like they can do anything. He's incredibly smart, so you want to deliver for him because he's so smart. And not only that, but he kind of looks after everybody and he makes them feel like they can do anything and you know th th sometimes you hear stories of people directing movies and they put people under pressure because their character is supposed to be under pressure and I'm really not a, a great believer of that I think the way that Mike Nichols does it which is just make an actor feel like they can do it and really fly with something is, is a much smarter and better way to do things well, he, I don't know the exact number, but he directed, I think, somewhere around 15 people to Oscar, actors to Oscar nominations. So uh, it's one of the, the highest numbers of any director in history. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he literally is probably the smartest human being I've ever met. I heard somebody say right after his passing that they had commented to him one time. They said, you know, if he was sitting alone at a table at a restaurant, you know, the IQ of that table was, was incredible. If one person sat down with him, even a smart person, the IQ would drop tremendously. It's <laughs> a good line. Um, speaking of your Oscar nomination, I was looking back over my, my history on my computer here, and you joined the Academy right after that. Uh, so you've been voting all these years. And, and I love to ask Oscar voters this whenever I get a chance, and that is, and you don't have to be specific if you don't want to and name specific people, but just when you've got that ballot and you're an actor, what are you looking for? What do you, how do you know you want to vote for somebody? It's really a response to, to, to the thing. You, you know, you don't set out looking for something. You, you get hit by something. You watch a movie. You, you're struck by you know, a performance or, you know, a piece of directing that, you know, you're really taken with. And I, 
literally just go for you know what I think is you know it's very very hard because often you know films are so different and to try and distinguish between them and say something's better than something else it's often just what's made the biggest impact really that I you know that I'm very kind of touched and affected by and and, and you know impressed by do, do the pre Oscar awards like Globes and SAG and Critics Awards do they influence you at all no not at all. No, honestly, I, I I look at everything, I watch everything, and uh, and it, it wouldn't affect me at all. Anything else that was going on in terms of things winning other things. Well, you won the Globe for a closer uh, back in that year, and um, you're going to be eligible here for the Golden Globes here for the Nick. And um, you were up just a couple of years ago for Hemingway as well. We've got you all uh, hundreds and hundreds of voters. I've got you right at the top of the prediction center to win. So I hope that doesn't put any pressure on you. <laughs> Thanks for that. You just jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know the Golden Globes, and you, you've talked to the Hollywood Foreign Press over the years. They love new shows. They they want to be the first to honor a new show. Talk about just you know when when you are in front of them doing a conference or doing a Q and A, just what that means to you and and promoting your your films and TV work. No, I mean they're they're hugely important, and it's you know they've become very familiar because you know sort of work with them work with them an awful lot and it's great that they you know they celebrate new shows I think that we should I mean when you know when it comes to the Nick it was for me it was you know such a bold original piece of writing and I think Stevens executed it so brilliantly it's you know it's a it's a piece of work that I'm extremely proud of well, I think you know all the Guild Awards are coming up too. I think it's. I told Mike, uh, uh, Michael, and uh, Jack that I really feel like it's going to do so well with you know cinematography and art direction and and sound and you know just all of those. And of course, Stevens, I think, is going to clean up at the Directors Guild. I just think it's it's going to do so well with all these technical awards. I'm I'm glad you think that because I thought that. I mean, the, you know, Stephen does surround himself with just the most brilliantly talented people and. You know, you, the set design on that show was unbelievable. Even you know, you walking around the set to the to the to, to the eyes. You go around. You know, you walk in those labs. You open those drawers, and they were full of sort of specific instruments, and they were just so impressive, even to be in. And it's a great support for an actor when you've got that around you, when you feel that that your environment is really substantial. And I think all across the board, you know the. Ellen, who did the costumes, did a really fantastic job. They were totally kind of authentic and faithful to the period, but really kind of, you know, stylish and, and captured the, the, the essence of, of what the scripts were trying to capture. Well, talking about art direction, I, I just love the scenes in that, that, that operating auditorium that you have. As an actor, did you kind of feel like God in there? Well, it, what was amazing is I'd seen an awful lot of pictures from original operating theatres, and it was kind of lifted from them, and it was just so authentic and faithful to what those operating theatres were. I mean, there, there are pictures that I could show you that are exactly that theatre, you know, and that was what was beautiful about all of the hospitalry and all of the sets and the labs and everything. It was just so... The, 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 they were, you know, inspired by the real thing and then sort of beautifully executed. And as we finish up here, what takes you to Vancouver? What, what's going on up there? Um, I'm shooting a, a film with Bob Nelson, who wrote um, Nebraska, and he's, it's his first time directing, and it's a script that I was really, really touched by and, uh, you know, um, really wanting to do it called The Confirmation. Um, it stars um, this boy, Jaden, who just starred in St. Vincent, who's the most phenomenal young actor, and the majority of the film is me and him, it's sort of inspired by the bicycle thief and I play a guy in a similar kind of world that Nebraska was set who gets his toolkit stolen out the back of his van and me and my young boy spend the rest of the movie trying to get it back and it's a, it's a really beautifully written script and uh, yeah, so we're just in the middle of shooting it. He worked. We interviewed him last year at this time for the uh, for the Oscar race, and he has worked so long in his career to get to this point. Oh, and he's he's such a nice guy, such a smart guy, and it's a really beautifully written script. It's so precise. It's as precise as the play, and it's a very touching story. What's the timeline looking like for a release? Like next fall time frame? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, listen, good luck with the upcoming, uh, maybe the Golden Globes and the SAG Awards, and we are really enjoying the Nick. So glad it's coming back for a second season as well. Right. Thanks very much.